right, so let's look at the last half of the review. So for 18 through 29, you're just going to find the derivatives using um, what I called the shortcut methods, or you're not going to do it by the long method that we just used for 16 and 17, or I'm sorry, for 14 and 15. All right, so notice we can just use power rules here. So if we move the powers out to the front, we'll get 16x cubed. Move the powers out to the front and reduce the power by 1. Here we'll get 6x. Here we'll get minus 2, right? The derivative of a constant by itself is just 0. So in the end, we just have 16 cubed plus 6x minus 2. Okay, number 19. Notice that if I want to take this derivative and use the power rule, I'm going to need to rewrite this. Okay, so we practice this a lot, but you need to make sure you're really good at this for the test. But this is the same as 5 times x to the 1 half. And now when I take the derivative and do the power rule, I can do it, right, because it's written as an exponent. So 5 times 1 half is 5 over 2. And then if I reduce the power by 1, it's negative 1 half. Okay, I don't want to see negative exponents. That's not proper form. So in the end, make sure you rewrite it as a fraction, okay? Notice also when I was ready to take the derivative, I said h prime of x. So every time on your test, I need to see that prime notation when you're doing derivative, if it's appropriate. <clears throat> All right, g of x is 7 over 5 x squared. So this is going to be um, 7 over 5 x to the negative 2. Okay, so, um, and notice that's just the original, right? So if you move the power out to the front, you're going to get negative 14 fifths x to the negative third. And so I want it rewritten like this. <clears throat> um, for 21, 21 might be the trickiest one to rewrite. So let's talk about how I would rewrite it. Notice it's in the denominator, which means it's negative, but I'm also taking the cube root. So this would be x to the negative one-third. And then I would just do the power rule. So bring the power out to the front and reduce the power by one. Okay, you can use your calculator if you need to, but negative a third minus one is negative four-thirds. And then to put it in the proper form, we would make sure that it has a positive exponent by writing a fraction. So 18 through 21 are all using the power rule in some way. You just may have to rewrite it before you're ready to use the power rule. Okay, so beginning it with number 22 is when you might have to think about maybe using some of your other rules. All right, so notice that we have a two-part function, and we are multiplying one times the other. So this is my first function, and this is my second. So I'm going to find the derivative by using the product rule. Okay, that's a rule you're going to need to know for your test. So the formula for that is first times derivative of the second. So what's the derivative of the second? It is 2x. Okay, so I'm going to label that. So this is first. This is derivative of the second. Okay, but then the formula says we go plus the second and then times the derivative of the first. Notice the derivative of 4x minus 2 would just be 4. So always try to clean up these problems. Notice I could use distributive property kind of twice here. So to get full credit, you'll need to make sure you clean these up. So we get um, 2x times 4x is 8x squared. 2x times minus 4 is minus 4x. Same thing here, 4 times x squared is 4x squared. And then 4 times 6 is 24. So we get 12x squared minus 4x plus 24. All right, 23. Notice that looks the same but maybe, same as 22, but maybe we have to rewrite part of it. Okay, so um, h of x is 5x squared plus 1. And then I've got, sorry, not a plus sign, but a minus sign there. 
So the first thing I'm gonna re do is rewrite this. This would be 5x squared plus one, but this part could be rewritten as two x to the one half minus one. So notice I rewrote that second part so that I could easily use the power rule for the pieces. So there's my first and there's my second. So now I'm ready to take derivatives. So I'm gonna state that with my notation. So the formula for product rule is first times derivative of the second. So if you move the power out to the front, notice a half times two is just one, right? But then if we subtract one from the power, we're gonna get x to the negative one half. So this is first, right? This was the derivative of the second. And then we're halfway there. Now we need to do plus the second times the derivative of the first. Notice that would be 10x if we moved the power out to the front. So this is second. And this is derivative of the first. Okay, so kind of like the last problem, I'll give you some credit if you can get just here. Honestly, I'll give you most of the credit if you can get here, but if you want full credit, you always have to give simplified answers. So just remember that when we multiply terms with exponents, we add the exponents. So five times one is just five, right? So I'm trying to do this times this, but if I do two plus a negative one half, um, I get um, one and a half or three halves. One times this is just itself. Okay, so let's do distributive property again. And if I add these exponents, one plus a half, so two times 10 first is gonna be 20. And then x to the one and a half again, because I have one plus a half, and then minus 10x. So as weird as you probably think this looks, I actually have some like terms. So it's gonna be 15 x to the three halves. Normally you write things in um, biggest power first order. So then you had minus 2x, or 10x, excuse me. And then lastly, we'll just do one over x to the one half, okay? We rewrote that one as a fraction because of the negative exponent. Okay, so what about number 24? f of x equals one over x squared plus one. So notice this time we are doing um, a division problem. Okay, so we're gonna have to use the quotient rule. So you can remember the symbols for the quotient rule or you can remember it in words like I'm about to do. So remember the formula for quotient rule was bottom times derivative of the top. So let's be careful. The derivative of one is just zero minus the top. Let's put that in parentheses. Times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is just two X. And then it's all of that over the bottom squared. So notice in this case, because we have that zero, we're just gonna get negative two X. And then over the denominator squared. Okay, so if you remember back when we did this, we usually don't even really mess with, um, we don't usually mess with the bottom at all. We just work on the top and see if we can simplify that. All right, 25, um, and I think I was looking real quick. I think I'm gonna need to change the key. It looks like um, I didn't put a negative sign. When I was typing that key out, I mean, it's kind of a mess, right? There's a lot of symbols and stuff, so I think I need to change that and make it a negative. Um, but I'll do that um, here in the next day or so. But if you already printed it off, just change the key on 24 to say negative 2x. You could just put a negative sign there. All right, so another quotient rule. So the formula is bottom times derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom and then all over the bottom squared. 
So we're gonna do distributive property. In other words, we wanna clean this up on the top. Also remember we have this negative sign here, so keep that in mind. 2t times t is gonna be 2t squared. 2t minus, times minus three is gonna be minus 6t. Um, t squared times one is t squared, but don't forget about the minus, so it's minus um, t squared. And then one times one is one, but again, don't forget about the minus. So in the end, if we combine like terms, we get t squared minus 6t minus one over t minus three squared. And that's as far as we can go. We can't factor the top, we can't simplify anything, so that's as far as we can go. Let me move that up. All right, so number 26, notice we have f of x equals x squared and then an ln of x. So even though there's not a multiplication dot there, it's implied that this is two different functions. Anything with an x in it is its own function. So I'm gonna be doing product rule here. So remember product rule is first times derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay, so I'm not gonna label this one, but that's what I did, right? First times derivative of the second. Derivative of ln of x is one of our special cases. It is one over x. Um, and then I did plus second times derivative of the first. So now let's just kind of clean this up, like this x can go away here, right? So in the end, for my derivative, I just get x plus 2x times the ln of x, or the natural log. Okay, I reordered that simply because usually we write ln of x terms last, okay? But it wouldn't technically be wrong if you left it like this. All right, 27, um, g of x equals three e to the x minus four x cubed. Notice this is different, right? We're subtracting two functions but the functions are separated by a minus sign. So we don't need any fancy rule for this. We can just do each derivative. So remember three, we would pull down, right? The derivative of e is always itself. And then just do the power rule here. Okay, so there's really not a whole lot to that one. That one's kind of mixed in with some more challenging ones, but 27 is actually pretty straightforward. 28 is pretty straightforward also. You just have to remember your rule. So the derivative is going to be, this is a, the general exponential rule, right? So the derivative is going to be itself and then times the natural log of whatever the base number is. Okay, and that's all you can do with that one. So again, if you know the rule, it's pretty straightforward there. And then last but not least for this group, we've got um, r of x equals three natural log of x plus log base three of x squared. So just like we did for a lot of the other problems, we need to rewrite this original. In other words, this two is not where we would like it to be, but we're gonna use the rule of logs to move that to the front. So I'm not finding derivative yet. But I can just move the two out to the front. And notice now I am ready to find derivative. Okay, so the derivative of the natural log of x is always just one over x. So I'm gonna bring down my three, then I'm gonna have one over x. And then for the second part, bring down my two, and then this is the general log. So remember the formula for that is going to be um, one over the natural log of the base, which in this case is three times one over x. And so if I clean that up, this is gonna look like three over x for this, right? Think of that like three over one. Um, and then the second one's gonna be two over um, x times the natural log of three. Or you could say the other order, ln of three times x. I don't really mind either way. <clears throat> All right, so I wouldn't expect quite as many of those on the test. I mean we had a lot of questions involving different types of derivatives, right? There were 12 
but notice that there's a mixture of every type of derivative we did. So you certainly need to make sure you know how to do all the rules. Make sure you know power rule and when to use it. Make sure you know product and quotient rules, and then make sure you know your special cases like um, logarithms and exponentials. Okay. All right, so let's do the last few. Those are, uh, the last few are really more application questions. So, um, all right, so let's look at part A, 430. Find the slope of the tangent line to the graph of h of x equals 3x minus x squared um, at the point negative 2 comma negative 10. So the wording slope of the tangent should automatically um, make you think, hey, I need to find derivative. So the derivative of this is 3 minus 2x. But notice it asked for the specific slope at this point, so that means you need to plug in whatever x value they gave you. In this case, that was negative 2. So I end up getting a slope of 7 at that particular point. And then for part b, recall this is the equation for a line. So we're just going to plug in what we know. It's y minus the y value equals the slope we just found, x minus the x value. And then just kind of clean that up. But you'll get, if you move stuff around, you'll get 7x plus 4. Okay, and then um, part C says identify the values where the tangent line is horizontal. So I'm going to go to the side to do this. So just remember that horizontal slopes equals zero. So you're going to set the derivative equal to zero. And when you do that, notice you'll get x equals two-thirds. So that's the answer. At x equals two-thirds, the slope is horizontal. Okay, um, so let's look at 31. Um, so we have a position x cubed minus 9x squared plus 15x. Okay, so notice it says the instantaneous velocity function is the derivative, right? So first it asks you just to find the derivative. It's just calling it in this problem the instantaneous velocity. Okay, so there's the derivative formula. Um, so that's part A. In part B, it says find the velocity when x is 0 um, and when x is 3. So in other words, they want you to plug in 0, and they want you to plug in 3 to that equation you just found for derivative. Okay. So I'm not going to show all the steps for that, but if you plug in 0, you get 15, because notice this would go away and that would go away. For 3, we'll go ahead and write it out. But if you let your calculator do the work, you'll get negative 12 for that. And then part C says find the times when the velocity is zero, okay? So time is x in this problem. So they're telling you to set the velocity, which in this case is the derivative equal to zero. So in this case, if you're trying to factor this, I would hope um, that we could kind of see that, hey, these all have a three in common. You can factor something this large, but it's a pain. So I like to pull out anything they have in common first. And then notice that this will factor into x minus 5, x minus 1. So it looks like there's two answers. At x equals 5, the derivative will be 0, but also at x equals 1. Okay, so that means for this problem, um, the velocity um, when, or when the velocity is 0 will be both at times 1 and 5 seconds. Well, let's look at number 32. Um, I always do this problem in my face-to-face -face classes. I just kind of consider it a public service announcement. Um, let's write down the problem right, though. So every type of alcohol has a different absorption rate. Absorption is just how quickly your bloodstream takes on that alcohol. Okay, and that's something you need to know if you're going to drink alcohol, particularly if you're going to try to go back to regular activities like driving, like doing anything. Okay. 
So notice part A says, what is the percentage? If you read the problem, this formula tells us percentage of alcohol, okay? What is the percentage of alcohol in a person's bloodstream after one hour and then after four hours? So there's no calculus required. We're just gonna plug in one and we're gonna plug in four and we're gonna use our calculator. So 0 0.23 times one and then e to the negative 0 0.4 times one power and then the same thing for four. Okay, we're gonna get approximate answers, so we'll use the approximately symbol. So um, we're at 0 0.15, but here we're at 0 0.19. Okay, both above the legal blood alcohol level, notice. Okay, um, notice after four hours, we're still rising, right? So that means that you um, can't just stop drinking and immediately go drive or do something like that because your body's actually still absorbing the alcohol depending on the potency of that alcohol, which whiskey's pretty potent, okay? So notice the wording change for number 32. Instead of just asking for the percentage, it says how fast. So when you see how fast, you need to automatically think slope, rate of change, or derivative. In other words, it's telling you to find the derivative, okay? So let's see if we can go ahead and find the derivative. So that's gonna be a little trickier. So A prime of T. So the first thing is we have two functions. If you look back at the original where I'm pointing, we have two things involving T. So we have to use the product rule. So it is first times the derivative of the second. Okay, so you have to be really careful about this. this we had a for problem like this before, but when we have a power that's other than just T, we have to use the general rule. So remember, the derivative of a general base is going to be itself, and then times the ln of that base. So we had a finance question like this, so I want you to look back at that if that is shaky for you. But this is first, and this is the derivative of the second. Okay, so we're halfway there. We still have to do plus the second times the derivative of the first, but the derivative of the first is just 0.23. So this will be second. This will be derivative of the first. So if we clean all of this up, and I would want you to. In other words, if we multiply things that we can multiply together, by the way, this works out if you plug this in your calculator, the ln and the e actually just cancel each other out and you just get negative 0 0.14, but then we can multiply it by this. So you're gonna get uh, negative 0 0.092 t and then e to that power, and then plus the 0 0.23 e to that power. Okay, so we have our derivative formula, and now we're going to use that to find our absorption rate at an hour versus at four hours. So we're just gonna plug that in, let our calculator do all the work. So first we're gonna plug in one. And then for this one, we're gonna plug in four. Okay, so let your calculator do all that nastiness because it's a pretty ugly one. Um, so this is going to be 0 0.09, and this is going to be negative 0 0.03. Remember, these are rates of change. So what this means is at one hour, you're still increasing your blood alcohol content of 0.09% per hour. But at four hours, notice it's negative, which means your blood alcohol content is at least going down. It may not be within legal limits, but at least you're on the downhill slide. That's all that means. All right, um, 33, uh, the quarterly profit. Um, so here's the profit equation. P of X equals negative one third X squared plus seven X plus 30. Okay, so what is the profit if Cunningham spends, uh, so read the problem, notice that um, the P is profit, right? X is the thousands of dollars they spend on advertising. 
So for part A, it says um, find the profit when they spend 20000 in advertising. Just make sure you read the problem because 20000 means X is 20 since X is in thousands. Okay, so in other words, if we want the profit, just the straight up profit, we just plug it in. Okay, so plug that in your calculator and you will get um, 36.6 where the six repeats. Okay, so make sure you know how to transfer that into a real dollar figure. That would be $36,666.67. Okay. Remember, because this is in thousands, that's why it comes out to be that way. So just move the decimal place three times. In part B, though, it says to find the derivative. We can do that, right? We just use power rule. So move the power out to the front, and you get negative two-thirds x plus seven. And so then for part C, it says, what is the rate of change if they spend 10,000 a quarter versus 30,000 a quarter? Okay, so we need to find P prime of 10 and P prime of 30. So we're just gonna plug it in. Okay, so we'll end up getting um, 0.3 Remember, this is in thousands, so we're going to talk about what that means here, and we're going to get negative 13. Again, this is in thousands. So if we remember that we moved the decimal place three times for thousands, that means we're increasing by $333.33 per quarter here. Okay, but our profit is decreasing by 13000 a quarter here. In other words, we're spending too much on advertising at 30000 Okay, So at some point, right, our profits will take a hit if we keep spending more and more money on anything, um, even if it is advertising. So that's all that problem is demonstrating. All right, just a few more to go. Um, 34, the cost in dollars of producing X units of a certain baseball bat. Um, the cost is 0.01 X squared plus 2x plus 10,000. All right, so for part A, we find the actual cost of the 3,000 first unit. So we did one like this when we covered 10, 7. Okay, so we're just going to do C of 3,001 minus C of 3,000 because this would be the cost of all the first 3,000 items, right? Subtract off the cost of 3,000 items. Okay, so that would leave us with the very one that we want, which is the 3,000 and first item. So if we plug both of these in here, I'm just gonna kind of fast track this one. We get um, 106,6201 for this one, if you plug in 3,001. If you plug in 3,000, you get 106,000 for a difference of 6201. Okay, so all I did was plug in 3,001 and 3,000. For part B, it says find the marginal cost. So when you see marginal, you should automatically think derivative. Okay, so for this one, we need to find the derivative of the cost function. Okay, so if you move the power out to the front, you get 0.02x plus 2. All right, so if we want the 3,000 and first item using the marginal, remember marginal means the next item. Okay, so we're actually just going to plug in 3,000. So remember, the next item would be the one we want. And notice if we do that, we get an answer that's really close to what we got in A, and it should be. The one we did in class was exact. This one's like a penny off, okay? So the marginal um, cost is an approximation for the actual cost. So we're just one penny off, okay? So some people would think that was close enough. It would kind of depend on your business if that was close enough. 
All right, lastly for this one, find the average cost function. Remember what that looks like. That is C bar. And the formula for that is cost over X. Okay, you are gonna need to know the basic cost, profit, and revenue formulas. So if I put the cost function over X, that's my average cost. And then notice it asks you to plug in 3,000. So we're just going to get, um, honestly, you could do this too if you wanted. The cost of 3,000 over X, right, which would be 3,000. The reason I say that is we already figured this C of 3,000 out in part A. So it's just going to be 106,000 over 3,000. And if you divide that out, it's about 35, 33 per unit. <clears throat> okay, 35. If you have a revenue function that is negative 0.05x squared, it's really sloppy, um, plus 350x. Okay, so notice the first thing it asks you to do is find marginal. That should always tell you, hey, I need to do derivative. So if you move the power out to the front, you get negative 0.1x plus 350. So that's what I asked for in part A. In part B, I said to plug in 3,000 and then tell me what that means. So we'll plug in 3,000 and use the calculator. Notice we get $50. Okay, so when I say briefly explain, I just want you to tell me what that means. So the revenue earned from the next item, right? So what would be the next item if we plugged in at 3,000? So the revenue earned from the 3,000 and first unit is about $50. That's what it means. And I say about because the marginal quantities are an approximation, but they're usually really, really close. All right, last but certainly not least, number 36. Okay, use the cost and revenue functions in 35. Okay, so for part A, uh, 34 and 35, you need to remember that profit is always cost. Sorry, I switched that. Is always revenue minus cost. Okay, so I'm gonna take the revenue function from the earlier question. And I'm gonna subtract off the cost function from the earlier question. Make sure you remember that this minus sign distributes, but you're gonna get a profit function if you work all that out of negative 0.06 x squared plus 348 x minus 10,000. Okay, that's part A. Part B is to find the marginal profit function. Marginal always means derivative. So we're gonna take the derivative of this guy. So that's gonna be negative 0.12x plus 348. I guess back in part A, I was supposed to also plug in 3000. I don't think I did that. Um, so let's go back to part A. Um, I'll squeeze it in over here. So if I want to do the profit for 3,000 units, I just need to plug it into that profit equation, right? But if you do that, I'm not going to um, kind of squeeze that in too much. But if you plug that in, you'll get the 494,000 that's on your key. So always make sure you read through the problem. I was kind of going hasty there. Um, all right, part C. Um, compute P prime of 3,000 and then briefly describe what it means. So if you plug in 3,000 to that derivative formula you just got in part B. Um, then you're going to get negative $12. That means you're not gaining money at this level. You're losing money. Okay, so interpreting your results. Um, remember, it means the next item. Okay, so... The profit 
earned from the sale of the 3,001st unit is negative $12. Okay, that means you're losing money, but that happens in business all the time, frankly. <clears throat> all right, so part D says, find the average profit function and the profit per bat when 3,000 units are sold. So we haven't really talked about average profit, right? But we talked about average cost. Okay, so average profit is just the same as average cost would be. You just take the profit equation and you put it over X. Okay, so um, if we plug in 3,000, so plug in 3,000 everywhere there's an X. I'm not going to write that out but we end up getting $164.67 per unit. In other words, the average profit at this level is $164.67 per unit. And then last but not least, calculate the derivative of that. So let's rewrite the um, average profit function first. Okay, remember how I said if you have a single denominator, you're allowed to pull them apart into pieces. So you're allowed to say this is negative 0.06x plus 348 minus 10,000 x to the negative 2. So all I did was say this over x, this over x, and that over x. And not negative 2, I'm sorry, that would be negative 1. Okay, so, or you could do quotient rule, but I think this way is easier. So the derivative is going to be um, negative 0 0.06. The derivative of this guy is just zero, right? If you move the power out to the front, you get plus 10,000 x to the negative two. So you end up getting this. And so notice all we need to do now is plug in 3,000. Okay, so let's plug that in the calculator. And actually for this one, um, I didn't plug it in ahead of time. But um, if you plug that in, I am pretty certain that it's going to round to negative 0 0.06. In other words, this is going to come out to be just about zero or almost zero. Okay, So it's basically losing about six cents per unit here. Okay, So this comes out to be something, but when you round it to the nearest penny, it ends up just being 0 0.06 or negative 0 0.06. So the profit is actually reducing by six cents per unit um, on average at this level.